Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. You are in our Situation Room, a Monday through Friday virtual stitching retreat where we hang out in here and just do whatever we do on retreat, which is whatever we want, right? Good morning, everyone. So great to see everybody here. Woo, yesterday was a whirlwind. I had my live yesterday on Sunday and uh, gave away a bunch of stuff. And oh my goodness, I had a good time. But y'all, that that particular live just wears me out. The whole rest of the day, I'm just useless, completely useless. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, hello, New Jersey. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's great. Mmm, Frida's over here hanging out by the door. You don't see her right there. She's in. Ch Hello, Frida. You want a, you want a goldfish? Good morning, baby. Sweet girl. Uh, yeah, that energy you say, Kim. Um, it's like you're on, you know, because there's so much to get through, and so much to remember, and when. That's why sometimes I watch um, box openings on YouTube and I've seen people do them cold where they're opening the tape for the first time when they open it up and they don't have a clue what they're looking at. And I could never do that. I don't think it does the company justice that, you know, they've sent you this thing to promote and you don't know what you're talking about. And then it doesn't do your channel justice if you don't know what you're talking about. Right. Although there are times I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that happens. Yeah. So um, it was high paced. Yeah. It's a little hard for me, but I think I might have to scale back on the number of products. So it was like if I was doing it every week, I didn't have enough to show. And if I do it once a month, I got a whole bunch to show. I'm sure there's a balance somewhere. Box openings are silly. You're funny, Catherine. They can be. They can be. I've seen them where I love it. And then I've seen them where I cringe and I'm like, oh, that's not what that is. You know? <laughs> but I do box openings because... I promote for me time and creative notions, right? So, and their creative notions was the very first company that uh, reached out to me to promote their box. And so uh, Vicky's wonderful. She's a sweet lady. Yeah. It is a good thing. I do it late in the day. Yeah. I know. And see, uh, Kim says she loves seeing all the new, um, box openings because a lot of people live in a quilt desert you know or they don't get to go out anymore and go shopping or whatever oh thank you kathleen for the sticker that's so sweet you're very thoughtful thank you darling i um you know and that's kind of what i keep in mind is sometimes you guys don't many of you many of you and i hear from you all the time in my emails y'all can't get out maybe you don't drive anymore or you don't drive that often or the quilt store closed or something like that. So that gives you, it's like a virtual shopping trip, right? A little uh, QVC infomercial, if you will, for quilting. <laughs> so I'm showing you what you're missing out on. Yeah, I know. That's that's okay, Barbara. Well, I've got links. If you want to get it, click on it and jump over there and, and grab it, right? So the other day I was poking around on the luminaire trying to figure out what um how to add a basting box to a design right and i came across something i had no idea about many of you probably already knew okay you didn't wait oh killian this is cute let me tell you what that was like the last time Keith said seam rippers were ready, she waited to the end of the show. And when she got there, they were gone. Yesterday, when he came in and said they were on the site, she went right away. And you're a smart girl because they are all gone. Okay. Again, they are all gone. Um, he gets a notice on his watch whenever one sells out of the Shopify store. And his watch was just ping, 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 ping. And... It's amazing. Um, we're very blessed with you guys, for sure. Uh, very, very blessed. 
but I know you can't get a lot in Australia. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So people were saying yesterday, somebody mentioned about getting the downloads uh, overseas. And that did not even occur to me yesterday with the DRK kit um, from Mona. That I suppose if you're overseas, you could have been eligible. You could have put your name in the hat, right? Because it's a download. But I don't know if there's a difference between licenses to USA and licenses to overseas. I have no idea. I didn't check on that with him brilliance. But I will tell you, um, you're serious about your Keith Rippers. Yes, ma'am. That's right, Tina. <laughs> um, but the, I am getting ready to set up an affiliate account with Smart Needle. Yay! Uh, she and I have been in talks, uh, Antoinette, a sweet, sweet lady. I reached out to her and I said, Hey, if you had a spike in sales, that was me. And, uh, she was very, uh, excited about it. So as I get more and more embroiderers, uh, you know, digitizers that are affiliates with me, then I can get downloads for you guys that are overseas. So you'll be eligible to get those things, Right. So if it doesn't require shipping, because yesterday, yesterday I said U.S. shipping only, um, but the download is not a shipping thing. So I guess you could have. I don't know, but we'll work it out because I really want to support you guys overseas. I just didn't even think about it. So, OK, so you checked it out after I met. How'd you miss it? I know. I know. And I love that she has a bunch of super cute four by four designs because there's a lot of people who like embroidery, but they only have four by four hoops because they've got those smaller machines, you know. So that's nice that things are digitized for those. Those are hard to find. Good morning, Bernadette. Yay, smart needle, Debbie says. <laughs> yeah, she wants to uh, have some goodies to send out for giveaways. And then I'm going to talk to her about downloads as well for you guys. So. All right. So I was, what is Smart Needle, Melanie? Smart Needle's an embroidery design site. It's a the cutest, cutest. If you like whimsical, and she's got some artisan designs too, but if you like whimsical stuff like I do, my style is uh, traditional whimsy. And that is, I've noticed, I had somebody tell me that in a, I asked him, I said, I don't know what my quilting style is. And um, we talked about some of the projects I had made. Where did I, I guess this was in a quilt store. I can't remember who it was. And I said, uh, yes, they did revamp the website, Pets. Yeah, I had been shopping there for years as well. And if you need to get your old designs, just email them and they'll send them to you because they're not available, I don't think, in your account anymore. Or maybe they are. You can see the sale, but I don't know. You'd have to work that out with her. I know those designs are hilarious, Elle Faber. But um, so traditional whimsy is my style. And a lot of people, that's not a lot of people's style. That's okay. We just hang out here and, you know, the, the concepts are the same, right? And the, the process. Smart Needle, Beverly. S M A R T Needle. N E E D L E. Yeah, I love whimsy too. Life is serious enough. I need fun in my life. So anyway, I was poking around on here looking about a basting box. Let me turn on my iron. And Janine, thank you for my sticker. You're so sweet. Thank you. Very thoughtful to support the channel and the content. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I was poking around trying to figure out how to get a basting box. And... Lo and behold, I found background quilting in the embroidery module, not in Design Center like I usually see it. And I don't gravitate uh, toward the ones in Design Center because they double stitch. It's a double run on top of each other. But when I was in Tempe, one of the students there had these beautiful quilt blocks she had made for her daughter who loved elephants, right? And there's a lot of Dumbo elephants in the Disney and the Luminaire. 
And so she had made, you know, the she designed the block just in the embroidery module and then added background quilting around the applique or the embroidery. And I was like, that looks like a single run. How did you do that? How was your background quilting? Because I recognize the pattern from what I've seen in Design Center. And I go, how did you get that into a single run? And she goes, I don't remember. <laughs> I said, oh. So anyway, I was poking around in here looking for a basing box and came across this. And I was like, what is that? And boop, boop, boop. And up came the quilting. And I was like, no way. And it looks like a single run. How did I not know this? New to Smart Needle. Well, if you wait to buy something until you, I make my affiliate program up with them and put links below in the description box, you guys. It helps me out a lot. <laughs> okay. So I want to show you, if you haven't done this, I feel, okay, I'm probably the last person coming into the party. All right. Last person. Let me um zoom you in. Y'all probably all have known it. How many layers are in my Happy Halloween sandwich? Right now there's three. The, the top, the batting, and the backing. Just like, um, yeah. So if you guys, watch me not be able to figure it out. Y'all have to walk me through it. But, so for instance, this morning, I'm going to go ahead and restitch the, uh, I heart fall. It's on Wander Lane. Where's my applique pieces? This was a demo that I had done up at the Cibolo Creek Guild the other week. And I really didn't like that super dark background fabric that it was on. So I was. Debbie, a single run is just the needle only passing over the pattern one time. A double run, it goes up and back over itself and it looks a lot darker on the double run. And I don't want that dense of quilting. So I want, I've been looking for a single run. Anyway, okay. So I thought, well, let me remake this thing on this different background fabric and we'll see how it goes. So these blocks finish at six and a half. I don't have this hooped right. This is a six by 10, I think. The dime hoop. Let me pull this up. So I'm going to go to uh, embroidery and I know y'all, a piece went to the floor. Thank you. <laughs> we'll just do this together. I got it. I got it. I know. Y'all, I'm just a klutz. Okay. And memory. And I just, I sent the design over wirelessly and I changed up the, uh, the stitch order. So it, here it is on Wander Lane. I heart fall. It's a set. I'll set that. Let me get it. So you guys can see. So Okay, so the heart is a little leaf. Okay. So, right now, this is 5.69 by 5.54. So, I've got some space around it. All right. Let me back out just a little so y'all can see all the buttons. Okay. So, there's design one. And I want to go into add. And is that right? No. Let's see. Edit. No. Yeah, here, look. See that button right there? Looks like stipple. Background quilting. Look at that. Okay. It just sets stipple all over it. It doesn't have a distance around the outline. I can make that a little bigger. How did I not know this? Oh, that's the distance for the whole design. 
Okay. So now you've got a couple of things up here. Oh, here's the, put a little deal all around the outside of that. Is that what, is that what that button does? The flower box lay, layout and the flower box. Oh, I don't like that at all. Okay. So this button right here with the little circles, that gives you those background stitching patterns that are in Design Center. And that's what she had all around those elephants. Yeah, I don't like echo quilting. That was gross, wasn't it? Anyway, so I'm looking at this thinking, okay, I'm going to select that. Oh, not that. If you, oh, here we go. So now I can choose. These are the things I thought you could only find. You've got built in and then there's custom. I guess you can do your own. How did I not know about these things? I, I don't, I don't know. So are these though single runs? That's what I don't know. Let's do this leaf effect. See how that goes. I didn't know this. Look at how pretty that is. Okay, I want it a little farther apart around uh, the distance. I don't know how far. Well, that's pretty. But right here, this box, this is 10 and 5 eighths by 16. That's way too big, right? So how do I get this down to the size? Oh, that's for the hoop. Four by four. Oh, that's the either one, one or the other. But can't I make that smaller? I don't get the single run option here, Anita. Uh, so this is something I'm definitely going to poke around with. Watch it tell me I need a bigger hoop. All right. I can't change the size. It's not going to let me change the size. But I want to go into move. No. No. The, it won't let me do one or the other first. If I go into embroidery, change to a larger hoop, it wouldn't let me change it. Okay. Yeah. But we did that together. I'm going to poke around with it, y'all. Or y'all poke around with it or whatever. Let me know. I can always adjust it to make it larger and it looks like a completely different design. Yeah, Deborah, I know you can blow it up real big and it doesn't look like what it is. I know. Check the bottom button. Go back to the design and then hit the bottom button. All right. Uh, I'm in edit. How do I get back to return? Oh. No, edit, it won't let me rotate those. Go back. Huh, I don't know. I need to change my hoop size and settings first. Well, my frame size right now in settings is an eight by, eight by 12. It, it knows it has a six by 10 hoop in it. So I don't know. Can I put a shape like a, box and and then what dump it in hmm I don't know <clears throat> save to design center how do you do that Bernadette save it in the machine and then bring it up in design center I don't know I'll have to fiddle, figure it out in the meantime I want to go ahead and make this and I'll figure out being able to put background quilting all around it later. So, I don't know. Dave, you got your Frito fix. Hope you're happy. <laughs> yeah. 
So let me go ahead and um, stitch this out. Uh, I went and changed it so it does all of the placement lines first. I need to get this right. Uh, layout. Let me rotate this so move this. I think my sticker's crooked more than anything. That'll be fine. And change my thread color. Where did my little scissors go? I just cut these little pieces out this morning, y'all, so I have something to do with you guys. I got so many projects in the works. I don't even know what to do with myself. I don't know where to start. But right now, everything's kind of on hold because I'm busy working through um, the monster, you know, happy Halloween for you guys. Make sure those videos are ready. Thank you. Frida loves her scratchies. Um, so I put um, a notice in my local a town Facebook group that I was looking for a video editor and I had some nibbles. So that's kind of cool. Um, I've got a phone call today with a guy at 1130 and another guy I was talking to last night. Yeah, I know Tina, there's only one of me. I try to run myself through the Xerox and it just doesn't work. <laughs> so I am looking, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, it depends on the cost because, um, and Brains has not yet come out with a new discount code. Not that I saw this morning. No, uh-uh, Doris. So anyway, if I can just shoot the videos and get those to somebody who can edit and he does like big time stuff. He said he took this channel from 10,000 to over a hundred thousand in nine months. That's not the point. The point is, I went out and looked at his work and it was pretty good. So um, check with colleges for an intern. Okay, that'll be my next step. Yeah, I had a dad reach out to me and said his 13 year old had a, a YouTube channel and he sent me to it and I looked at it and I thought, that's really cute. It's a little Mario Brothers thing. But, um, you know, I can't pay a 13 year old. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> oh. There's a code. Yeah. You got new fills in baby lock too. Good. That's awesome. Uh-huh. So I'm just going to let this run the, um, I'm going to let it run the placement lines. No. Show how to remove quilting from under the pattern. You have essentials. Oh, enthusiast stitch artist too, and your scissors will not work. So Deborah, whatever piece is the lowest in the applique, you've got multi layers of applique. Whatever piece is the lowest, copy and paste it to a new tab and save it as its own I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to use brothers. I don't know what kind of machine you have. So save it as its own PES embroidery design or whatever machine format yours uses. Okay. And then you've got this one and it has all the stitches in it already. All of the blanket stitches merge that PES file into that in the right stitch order and your scissors should work. It does work on merged designs. The problem is the bottom layer is broken. The graphic is broken. You can't see it and you don't know until you get there and try it. So. Oh, you did, Teresa? You gave my name to your dealer? Good. If they would like to have me come out there, I'd love to. Florida, you betcha. Um, <laughs> when I need a new one in a couple years, he'll be 15, Margie. <laughs> 
got to be 16 to get paid in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm really hoping to find somebody. I have like three or four nibbles. So I'm hoping to find somebody that's not crazy, silly, expensive. You know, if they want $2,000 to edit a video, I can't afford that. There's no way. Especially making how many videos? The eighth, you know, there's 10 for the monster because it's, it's expensive. So hopefully, and the person has to know your style, you know, in order to do... Because doing a video for the way I do long form videos is totally different than a cooking channel. You know, when you're doing tutorials, click here, click here, do this, do that. And then you say something wrong. They got to figure out that you said something wrong in the clip because usually you throw the clips up to like a Google Drive and then give them access to it and they pull it down. So you never know how it's going to go. And yeah. Okay. So look, I got all of my, I got all of my background quilting done. That looks cute, right? I love this process, y'all. My goodness. So now I got to iron on my letters. Frida. Um, I, oh, the doggy door's closed. I got to go. I got to let her out. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. I had the I had the cover on the doggy door, so Frito couldn't get in here last night during the live because um, I mean she'd sit here quiet for you know until somebody drove up to deliver something, and then it would be all barking during the video, and I didn't want that. <laughs> but I forgot to take the cover off the door. She come over here and bothered me. So she wanted to go out, I'm sure. Keith is up now. He can let her out. So I'm just going to iron these on. Now, I will tell you guys, when you're doing this, you got to be really careful about getting your letters right in that stitch line. Because if they're over, you can, um, you'll have fabric sticking out from underneath the, underneath your, um, your little stitch line. You don't want that. So, and it's, it takes a little practice. And when I was doing the one at the guild meeting, the, uh, <laughs> I, the lines in the leaf stitched before the leaf did, I was like, uh Oh, <laughs> but you know, embroidery, you can fix just about anything. So what I'll do is I'll iron them on and then kind of nudge them with my finger a little bit if I see anything that's not up to a line or anything that's hanging out over it. So that works pretty well. And then um, one thing I'm doing too on the, uh, on the Happy Halloween, wherever uh, one of the pieces... Like it, you got to digitize the mouth and the eyes and that kind of thing. I go up to create design, begin new design so that you can change the color of that thread. Oh. You're going to want to change the color of the thread on the eyes and the mouth and that kind of thing to something other than black because the software has a tendency to group it in. It'll stitch the mouth and something else. And you weren't ready for it. And you kind of got to watch. I had that happen on the bat on the witch's shirt. And I had to go back and change that bat smile to white. That looks pretty good. It looks crooked. The fabric's crooked. The fabric's crooked. The design is crooked. I'll straighten it out when I trim it. Again, love embroidery, very forgiving. The whole nine yards is crooked. I'll straighten it out. 
Yeah. I was in a hurry this morning when I pull all, put, put all of this together. And I'm just stitching this all down with the same thread, so. Oh, I'm happy to hear that, Rhonda. Look at this. Rhonda did snap the K the, this way on the Lori Holt Prairie Meadows quilt. Fantastic. Good for you. Isn't that nice? Your room's full. No more room to work. I have got to... Um, I got to pick this place up. It's still not put together from putting everything away from last night's live and then uh, getting this thing ready this morning. And you guys, there are over 40 orders in the store site for the seam rippers that we have to get out this morning. I'll be busy this morning. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really hoping that uh, that I'm really hoping that a, a video editor can help me out. That's going to make my life a lot easier. And then I can do more how to tutorials. Um, it's the editing that takes so incredibly long. Yeah, my hoop might be crooked. That's true. But I digitized the um, I digitized these little veins in the leaf that it's stitching right now. Get in there and show you. Whoop. Yeah, those little veins. So I digitized those using the draw tool in Imbrilliance. You got the email and they were already sold out of Purple Bernadette. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's crazy. I feel bad too because a lady got one and um, Bonnie and her husband are coming down to the coast with us this weekend. And she said, oh, Bonnie will bring it to me. And I thought, okay. And I went to the store site to look and she had not ordered one and they were, they were all gone and I felt bad. So we have no idea. So we have... You know, I pay for that little, it's an app, that little black box that's on the site that says notify me when available. That's a monthly, like five bucks a month for me to pay for that. For, so you guys can reserve, you can get an email when they're put back in stock. And um, I have no way of knowing who's got what on reserve. And then when they go in stock, what if the person doesn't see the email and somebody who didn't even have a reservation shows up and buys it and it's there's no way there's no way to manage that so have not embroidered for so long you're scared to even turn on your machine oh carolyn do it you won't break it it's just a sewing machine but it's moving the fabric instead of you it's it's the same thing you're not going to break it turn it on poke around on it i have if if you go on my channel i'll show you let me let me get my channel pulled up and i want to show you i have some baby beginner embroidery tutorials uh no that's not what i want i want let's see it's in the quilting there we go no that's not it i don't know what i'm talking about Okay. I'm pulling up my channel on YouTube. I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay. So here's my main page of my channel. And you may or may not be able to see it depending on the device that you're on. This is a laptop. We got home videos, shorts, lives, playlists. You can go through my playlist there. Uh, but 
here on the, there's a magnifying glass, click on this and search and type in beginner. Okay. And there are beginner embroidery tutorials. Oh, great. That's awesome. It's done. Um, beginner quilting series, um, beginners to in brilliance, all of this beginner means that, um, I'm taking you and here's a real good one for alignment tips for tips and tricks for beginners with traditional hoops. Cause maybe you haven't invested in a, uh, you haven't invested in a magnetic hoop yet. So, you know, beginner quilting with panels, all how to do camera, but all that kind of stuff. So if you type in the word beginner, you're going to get a lot of videos. And when it says beginner, I'm taking you through how to thread the machine step by baby step. Okay. And it doesn't matter what kind of machine you have. You can have, I started on a brother PE 770 and now, which is this little bitty dinky thing with a tiny little screen, didn't have a camera, didn't have anything in it. And then now I've got the brother luminaire, but the buttons are all the same. And even though you may not have a brother machine, you might, but I don't know. But even if you don't have a brother machine, all embroidery, all embroidery machines have the same buttons concept of some sort you know there's it may or may not have a needle threader but you need to go through your your box so your cm 650 or 550 didn't cut out the fabric out oh yes your arthritic hands need the help okay you're going to call all brands yeah um if you call mo queens sewing in Tempe, he'll ship it to you and you get a free power tools with thread tote bag if you buy a scan and cut from him. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Um, you just didn't have the depth right on the blade, Connie. That's the only problem. Yeah, you know, because you have to do a test on those CM models. You have to do a test and make sure it's going to cut through the fabric. Yeah. Unless the blades dull. And I don't know that you can continue to get extra blades for those. So Melanie, you're having the chat pull up difficulty on an Android phone. I think there's, I don't know. I, and there are three dots and you can slide them over and see it underneath the video. I'm not sure. Yeah. Mo Queens will send you a free tote bag. If you buy them, you call them up and say, Hey, Becky told me to call you guys to buy my scan and cut and I'll say, okay. And she said I could have a free tote bag with her emblem on it. I got, it's got a big logo. I got, anyway, they'll send it to you. Yeah. So I'm almost out of coffee, you guys. Oh my goodness. All right. So it said it was done and it turned out as cute as can be, even though it's a little crooked, I'll trim it straight. But look at that. That turned out absolutely adorable. So I scanned in the paper pattern into the Brother Scan and Cut and got those designs in there, right? Uploaded them to Canvas, cleaned up the page, downloaded them back to the Scan and Cut, cut out the fabric on them, and then imported those vector graphics into Imbrilliance and turned it into an applique embroidery design. This is what I'm talking about. Okay. I love this. I love it. I love it. It is just so nice not to have to cut that stuff by hand and so nice not to have to, um, you know, stitch it on the domestic. I love it. You like the crooked. <laughs> no, I'm leaving it up. Oh yeah. Wanda that thanks for the reminder. Thumbs up you guys. How can you get your canvas started? You have the 325. Michelle, just go out to canvasworkspace.brother.com and create an account. It's totally free. Create an account. And then you're going to want to, uh, I have a video, how to connect your scan and cut to the cloud. Canvas. I have a video on how to do that. It was when I unboxed mine. 
Okay. Yeah, Midge, I love the process too. Oh, we're not having a giveaway today, Barbara. Yeah. So I need to just cut this straight. Y'all, this turned out, look at the back. It turned out perfect. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Love. Total love. Look at the vein. Didn't that come out nice? That's a double run with a 2.0 stitch length in a brilliance. Okay. Isn't that nice? Except that it's crooked. Like I said, I'll, I'll square it up. And then um, I have it ready for uh, the mini quilt. This was just one of the mini quilts in the, in the book. It's cute. I, I needed to choose one that was really simple, that didn't have overlapping, because I was doing a demo of Embrilliance as well at that guild meeting. So I needed, I needed something on there. Oh, Barbara, thank you for your sticker, sweetheart. That's very thoughtful. Thank you. I appreciate it. I can buy more fabric. Yay. So. Oh, no, you dropped your clip threads into your coffee. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> That is so funny. Um, oh, yeah. No, you cannot. The Scan and Cut will never talk to the Altair. This is brother to brother technology, not brother to baby lock. Those machines might be made in the same factory, but they don't share the same proprietary whatever. Yeah, that's, you know, so like the reason you can send designs wirelessly to brother or baby lock in Embrilliance is because Embrilliance is a third party software. It's not brother or baby lock software. So um, you'll, it, it never will. It never will, but it's worth it to get one anyway. Um, get a scan and cut anyway. You just have to save to USB. That's no big deal. You know, a little extra fiber is good for you. That's right. Yeah. They're never going to come out with that Bernadette. No, I, I don't think so. I doubt it. So. Brother chose to keep the scan and cut technology to themselves. Well, that's their business model. That's their business. You know, I originally chose a brother machine because of the cost. The price point was so much lower than a baby lock. I did have a baby lock. At one time I had an Elegante. Yes, that is correct, Heidi. The Embrilliance working file is BE. Yes. Um, so you, you know, the, the USB works, mm -hmm. I would not hold off on getting a scan and cut because of that. No, there's no way. And, you know, there is the technology called my connection where the luminaire and the stellar both can send designs, designs back and forth to the scan and cut using my connection. I never use that. I never do. It's not. It's not something I need to do. That's that doesn't come into my scope at this point. So, so actually, um, Connie says she loves that they share the Canvas workspace. You can use Canvas workspace regardless of the brand of embroidery machine that you have. You can have a Fa for a Husvarna, and you can still use Canvas workspace. Okay, there's nothing. It's the scan and cut that connects to the Canvas workspace. Yeah. So the embroidery machine does not. It's just the scan and cut. So um, it does not matter. I don't want to miss any of y'all's. Most of the transferring between the scan and cut and the computer is done using Canvas. That's you're absolutely correct, Patty. Right. Your scan and cut does not connect to your computer. Doesn't happen. Scan and cut can connect to the embroidery machine using my connection if it's a brother, luminaire, or stellar. But it doesn't connect to the computer. I have to put canvas in between that. It has to go up to canvas and down and up to canvas and down. How that works. Yep. Judy wants to know where the double run is in Embrilliance. We have a couple of minutes. I'll show you. You just bought a Stellar. Yay. Good for you, Debbie. Awesome. Bernadette. So if I get the scan and cut and transferring to Canvas Workspace, then you can use that to transfer to your Altair. If your Altair is wireless, yes, because Embrilliance will transfer to your Altair. It's on your computer. 
that are transferred to the Altair. Yeah, just like I do. If it's wireless, I don't know. And Scan and Cut does not connect to the PR1055 either. No. No, the 1055 does not have my connection yet. It might. We don't know. Okay. Let me show you. Y'all wanted to see. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the double run. Um, let me get into scan and cut. I'm sorry. Let me get into stitch artist. What am I saying? And pull up a design. Those are cutting file. Okay. I don't have anything on there that needs. Okay. I guess I could do a vein on one of these leaves. Where's the leaf? Where are my leaves? Oh, they're way down here. Okay. Let me go back here to you guys and share my screen. Does Simply Applique transfer to the baby lock? I don't know. I know it transfers to brother wireless machines. Give it a try. Yeah, it might. It doesn't hurt to try, right? I don't know. Well, I miss having groups to sew with too, Krista. Well, we can sew together, right? <laughs> you need a flow chart to see what connects to what and rem remember those. Jeannie, I actually did a flow chart of sorts in a blog post. I, I did that years ago. I've had my scan and cut since 2022. Uh, no, Michelle, I had a CM model before. Maybe I got the DX in 2022. I think I got my scan and cut in 2019. Debbie, I have lots of videos on Snaplique on my channel. Let me go back to um, my channel. I will show you. There's a good one. Matter of fact, it might be below this video in the scan, in the description box. It says process for Snap Snaplique, and um, there's a video on it. It's me doing Lori Holt's strawberry. The bird legs in sing. Yeah. Those were also done. That's on the floor over there. Can Simply Applique run without the other Embrilliance software? Yes. Simply Applique is a separate program from Embrilliance. It doesn't need Embrilliance to run. And I like Simply Applique. I started doing this process with Simply Applique. But Simply Applique has a little glitch in it. In that when you go to apply the blanket stitches... 99 times out of 100, it works. But that one time, okay, you go to apply the blanket stitches and it won't go all the way around the shape. And I can't fix that. And it drove me bats. And so when I'm making videos for you guys, it has to work 100% of the time. For you, if it doesn't finish out the blanket stitch, so it, it always throws the satin stitch on there and it looks great, right? Because that's the default. When you tell it applique, it throws a satin stitch on there. Did I finish American Pie? It's, I got to cut it off the long arm and finish the binding on it. We'll do that tomorrow morning. So um, you as a viewer can take your applique over to your domestic and finish the blanket stitches you know, get it all about to look the same and finish the blanket stitches around the applique. As a YouTuber, I can't do that. When I click convert to applique and then change that satin stitch to a blanket stitch, I need it to work 100% of the time. And it doesn't. In BES is the mothership software for Simply Applique. And that glitch is in BES and Simply Applique. It's a glitch and it doesn't work. Okay. It just bothers me. I don't like it when software doesn't work right. And my understanding is, is that Pacesetter, who has, makes that software for Brother, 
has no intention of uh, fixing that. I don't know why. I don't know. Um, let me see. You change the stitch length, Debbie, in, you can't bring up the properties box. It's not in create. It's in view. Let me show you. Go to window. Okay. So let's say I wanted to turn this into applique so I can see the properties box right here. It's not in create, sweetie. It's up here in view at the top of the screen in the view menu, toolbars and windows. Just click reset windows and toolbars, but you want to make sure all of these are checked. And there's the properties windows box right there. Okay. So if I convert all of these to applique and put the E stitch on them, and you can see it in the properties box, you can come over here and that's where you change it from E stitch to blanket. And this is where you can change your stitch width like that uh, right there. So that looks really nice. And when you've got these little tiny pieces right here, these little bitty ones, that's where you can make them even smaller. And that way they look nice and clean in these little guys. You can hold down the control key and do them both at one time. So anyway, that's how that works. Did that help? Am I going to start the May mini quilt today? I can. Um, I've got Thursday and Friday. I'm doing lives for uh, Kimber Bell's. Let me get rid of this. Does this work? So Thursday and Friday, I'm doing live for Kimber Bell's uh, May quilt. Um, I've already answered this, but am I? Oh, that I already read that one. What's the difference in menu buttons between Stitch Artist 2 and 3? Sandra, it's that reconstruct outline. And the reconstruct outline is in 3. That's the only reason I bought that. And somebody, you have questions if I can scroll up? Uh... I can't find them. Does essentials have the glitch of not going all the way around with the blanket stitch, Linda? No, it does not. That's why I switched to Embrilliance. That's exactly why I switched to Embrilliance. I've got to have it in order. Um, I can't find them, Betty, but they're, they're gone. Uh, maybe I can do the May mini quilt tomorrow. Not today. Because I've got to get all those seam rippers out today and that's going to take up my morning and I'm getting my new washing machine today. Yeah. What does the reconstruct outline do? Okay, Stacy. So when, when you scan a paper pattern into the scan and cut, that paper pattern has been made in, in the industry. The graphics on the creation, you get, you get, layers and layers. They make them in Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator or whatever. And what they will do, <clears throat> oh, Judy wanted to see that run stitch. I'm sorry. Let me do you that for you real quick. I don't have a run stitch, but I'll, I'll make one. I've got there and I, I squirreled, didn't I? Hold on. This is how I made the veins. So you just come up here to, these are your drawing tools, okay? And these are the these are the properties that you assign, the stitch properties you assign to the drawing tools. So if I wanted to make the veins, you just take the drawing tool and you just click, I hold down the shift key and make a little line, okay? Like that, and then hit enter. And see over here in the objects panel on the right, it says line. This is how I make the smiles on all of these monsters. 
Now I want it to be a run stitch. So right here, this icon up here in the stitch properties is the run. So you click that and now it's become a run stitch. And here in the properties box, you can change the run stitch type from a single to a double. And I like a 2.0 look. And that's what it looks like. See? So that's very handy to have that like that. Very handy to do that. <clears throat> so when these graphics are being made commercially, especially if they're using Adobe Illustrator, what will happen is, is they scan in a picture of it as well. Take a picture with your phone. If you ever do this with Illustrator, um, if you have Illustrator and know how to use it, you don't. Anyway, so you take a picture of it and you use that draw line tool like I just was using in Illustrator and you just click all along the picture. OK, so if you were to pull in the background image, that's exactly how we make the smile. You click all along the picture until it is exactly the way the picture is. And then now that's a now you're turning that into a vector graphic. When the digitizer is doing this, not the embroidery digitizer, but the person working illustrator. When you have this line and this line and they look like they meet or maybe they're overlapped a little bit, one on top of the other. The scan and cut sees that the, the human eye does not, but the scan and cut sees that. And if there's a teeny tiny break in that line, you can't add background stitches to it. It won't allow the blanket stitches. It just, it doesn't. And you've got to reconstruct that outline. So you, it, it's, and it won't remove, because if you have a broken graphic, it's not a shape, it's a line. And that's, that's a different speak in graphic building. So my new washing machine is going to be, be the it's an LG front loader washer dryer combo because uh, my dryer ducks up out the roof instead of out the side of the house whoever designed it didn't do laundry so those washer dryer combos take a long time I know that but that's right. The shape has to be a closed shape. You're absolutely right, Patty. Mm -hmm. That is the case in almost all embroidery designs. Yes, it's the closed shape that's the issue. So in Brilliance will allow you to throw blanket stitches on that if it's broken, but it will not remove hidden stitches if it's a lower piece. So that's why you have to take the lower piece, put it uh, on its own tab, save it as its own embroidery design, not the BE, but its own embroidery design, and then bring that in. And then it will remove the hidden stitches. So anyway, I'm going to set the washing machine. Thank you, Midge. I hope that helped. I, I hope that helped. Yeah. You're very sweet for your sticker. You're very welcome. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. So the, the plan is to do a load of wash, just set it for just wash, take that wash, put it in my dryer, let the dryer do its thing. And then the next load will be wash and dry. And hopefully in the span of three hours, I can get two loads done. That's the plan. So that's that. All right, you guys. And they don't make them in red anymore. So I had to get black steel. Michelle, you're trying to get it working with Canvas? Hold on. There's the Home Depot right now. It's out for delivery today. I got to figure out where it's at. Um, you're trying to get your 325 working with Canvas. Michelle, okay, here we go. I'm going to show you on my channel. I have a video. And we can just go to YouTube. You can search anything in YouTube. I think connect, um, scan and cut to brother canvas. Let's see. 
There it is right there. That's that's mine. There's Miss Balzer, Faye Fan Balzer, doing hers. Uh, this right here, this unboxing, the SDX 325, connect to internet and my connection with the Brother Luminaire, that will show you right there how to do that. That one will do it, okay? Both of those videos should help you. All right, you guys, our hour is up. Thank you for spending time with me. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out the door if you wouldn't mind. I'd appreciate it very much. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow morning in the situation room. Y'all go sew something. Bye.